It is time to find out if these cheap mods actually work. So we have a few different experiments going on today. I don't know if these are actually going to work and help improve the smoker experience with my less expensive offset smoker, but I see these modifications done all the time. Right now, I have this loaded up with the extended pipe fitter here to get more draw out of your smoker because you can see my chimney is on the, the shorter side. And then I also have an elbow to get the draw coming from the center, the middle level, instead of up high on the chamber here, along with some other modifications I made over the summer. I want to figure out, is this overkill or is this just the right amount of mix? So that's what this experiment is for today, is seeing if we remove one of these, will it increase your probability of a better smoking experience or if stacking the deck and having all of these in place is really the way to go. As always, make sure to check out comparisoncooking.com. This is for you to find out the latest going on, sign up for the newsletter and check out the barbecue journal to help you start mastering the basics. Let's get into this experiment and see what we find. Right off the bat, we are starting with the fully loaded modification. So we have the extra pipe here to try to create more draw. Um, quick temperature check. All right, it's not really getting hot. Uh, we need to increase the heat. I have plenty of charcoal in here. Some super hot, others are just getting lit. But normally at this point, I'm at 225 250 so right away and let's see we're at the same temperature so the good thing is we are getting the trifecta of temperature ranges up top here we're at the 150 and then in the back we're at the 150 to 160 mark so we are getting good equal distribution uh, throughout the cooking chamber however the temperature is not high enough to be cooking food uh, so that is obviously a problem. You can see where the setup is of the thermometers to try to see how we're doing throughout this experiment. Now the idea here is to get the pipe to draw that air out through that at this level here. And the reason we want to do that is so the smoke is coming directly over the meat instead of going up and over. But you've seen in my other videos, this chamber fills up with smoke. I haven't been worried about that. So this is starting to look like it's just overkill having this much going on. This has been a nice modification. As you've seen, it's been cooked on. I've kept it. This has helped distribute a lot of the heat equal throughout the chamber. So let's play around. I'm gonna let this go for another 15, 20 minutes. I know my smoker needs a good firing up and burn off, uh, but we'll get to that in another video. Uh, but we'll check back in a few minutes to see what the temperature is doing, and we'll start taking things away, like this elbow here. I wanna take that away pretty quickly. Normally, I want to have the perfect elbow coming straight down, uh, but from the store, this is the best I could get on such a limited time, so that's what we're starting with, but we'll make adjustments. All right, so we currently have 191 up front, 167 in the back, and 180 up top here. So obviously this isn't the efficiency we're looking for. So we're gonna start taking things away. And the first thing we're gonna take away is the extended chimney. Why? Because quite frankly, it's the easiest of these to get on and off. Uh, so we'll take this off first and see what happens. So the theory here is by extending your chimney, you're creating more draw and that creates more efficiency coming over your, your proteins or whatever you're cooking. Uh, with the smaller chimney, the theory is it's not always pulling out the way you want it to, which can have back airflow going through your firebox and out that vent potentially. 
So that's why uh, having the right amount of chimney is very important. And with the people that are super serious, I mean, people that build pits, uh, offsets, this airflow, the dynamics of it, this is engineering, this is science that goes behind it. Uh, so when you're making backyard modifications, you can be messing with the airflows, messing with the dynamics, and that could result in inefficiencies. So just by taking this off, uh, we're still at 195 up front, 180 up top, and 170 in the back. So the temperature has crept up. So we are back to a more efficient, uh, but it's still not anywhere close to what we need. So I'm gonna continue to take things off and see what happens. And then we'll start to put pieces back on in different, different formats to see if that helps. It's been about another 10 minutes. We're holding steady at 200 here, 172 in the back and 185, 188 up top. So not the ideal situation we are looking for. Let's take off this pipe and then give it another 10, 15 minutes, see what happens. Oh. All right, it's about 15 minutes later. We have 220 up front here, 200 up top, which I'm a little surprised with how much difference there is right now, and uh, 195 in the back here. Uh, so we had too many mods going on to get the temperature where I wanted it. So now I'm going to reapply the stack. We're gonna keep that front mod in place there. That, We've done other videos on that and you can watch that video right up there uh, or in the description below. And that showed how it helped even out the distribution. So that one I'm happy with. It's a very inexpensive mod. I got bricks from my backyard and some tin foil and used what I had. So that didn't cost uh, anything to me. So let's reapply this and see what happens. All right, so we are getting more draw through this extended chimney. I'm not seeing as much back, backdraft smoke pushing out of the fire chamber like I normally have, uh, but it hasn't drawn consistency out of my smoker. The front gauge up top is saying 260, the back is saying 230, and this is saying 245. So it's not creating a even flow like the other temperatures, the, the simple mod I put in place earlier is has more consistency across the board. I am happy with the conclusion that I drawn that it's gonna help pull the air through so there's less backdraft. But overall, um, this might work for you, but it's probably something I'm not gonna stick with. The elbow, I'm, it could work for you. I, I don't know, I see a lot of people do it, uh, but for me, it's just not working. Do I need to revisit it? Maybe I'll play around with it and do some other things, but for the, this experiment we did today, it's just not working out for me. Here are my final thoughts on this experiment. Uh, quite frankly, it didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to. I thought there was gonna be more effect that was positive versus kind of a muted result if that makes sense. Um, I really thought the elbow would yield more results, but it didn't. My final thoughts are a lot of people, when they get a new smoker, they want to make it perfect, obviously. Uh, I encourage people to work with what they have and expand from there. All right, do some smokes without any modifications at first, then you have a baseline of what to expect. After that, make small tweaks every cook to see if you're creating more efficiency or are you pulling yourself back and it's not as efficient as you thought it was going to be. One thing I do recommend right off the bat is to get some of the high temperature gasket to help encompass your smoker. That is something I would do right away we do get a question about that a lot and it has created less leaks which creates a more 
tight air chamber for your smokes. And to me, that's important. So that is something I would plan on doing right away. But for the rest of it, the smoke itself is going to gunk up your smoker. It's going to help seal up some leaks. So before you get too crazy with different modifications, a few cooks are actually gonna go a long way into increasing your smoker's efficiency. Now, these modifications might work great for your smoker. If you have a different smoker, it might be doing just the trick. Uh, but for this, uh, like I said, I'm probably going to just stick with my initial modification and go from there because I'm not yielding enough results in a positive way to say, wow, I need to make these changes. Uh, but for some people, it could be that this is the only thing they're using to modify and that's going a long way. So maybe one modification is right for your smoker, but stacking the deck and going with three modifications uh, in this experiment we just did today did not work. It did not help. So save your money, spend it on a high quality piece of beef and enjoy that instead. As you guys know, like I said earlier, check out Comparison Cooking, like this video, subscribe, and share this with a friend that is new in smoking in their backyard. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you soon.